Welcome to the Poundcast. Uh, my name is Brent Weinbach, and um, before we get things started, I just wanted to mention that this show is um, sponsored by Louisville, or Louisville, as one would probably prefer me to say, Louisville Vegan Jerky Company. They make Louisville Vegan Jerky. Um, it is soy jerky, okay? It is meatless vegan jerky, and it is, they, they, you can check out their website, uh, lvjco.com, and there's tons of flavors they have there, uh, flavors such as Buffalo Hot Wings, Smoky Carolina Barbecue, General So's, uh, Smoked Black Pepper, Pepperoni Pizza, um, and then every month they come out with these special small batch flavors. They're kind of special limited edition flavors. Um, and those examples of those, you could Neil hamburger jerky, uh, Riff Raff's orange chicken. Um, those are all, those are sold out. Uh, Shelby Park honey barbecue sold out. But um, the newest flavor they have, which is available, is sesame chicken. That's the new limited edition flavor, sesame chicken. Um, anyway, this stuff is bagged in the United States in Louisville, and it is, has a shelf life of nine months. And if you use the code word poundcast for your order, you get 20% off, which is just an amazing deal. I mean, 20% off because, you know, a lot of times things are 10% off. This is 20% off. Okay. Um, and yeah, have a look around, but you can also get the stuff at stores like whole foods and, um, and uh and sprouts and places like that you know you get it there if you want but wherever get it wherever you want you know if you want that discount you get it online um so yeah thank you to louisville vegan jerky company again lvjco.com now uh what else do we have going on here we've got um yeah, I mean, look, I mentioned we do have a Patreon account, patreon.com slash poundcast, but whatever on that. I talk about it later in the episode. Um, and, you know, we also were on YouTube, youtube.com slash the poundcast and Instagram, the poundcast. Um, on this week's episode, I'm going to be here with uh, it's just Jack and me doing a one on one kind of thing. And um, we do, uh, what do we do? What do we talk about? I'm trying to remember now, actually. I know we talk about 4th of July and we talk about, I don't know, England and independence from England and that kind of thing. And I don't know, we look at flags and colors and, but you know, in the after, in the unzipped, which is, that's the portion of the show that you get if you're a Patreon member, um, we get into this video of this guy talking about this uh, situation at an open house. He's a, he was a realtor, a real estate agent, and he uh, gets into this entertaining story i would say uh about what this what happened at this um this open house so you're gonna want to check that out okay anyway um i think we could just get right into the show i'm just trying to think if there's anything else uh, no nothing really except for this so on the patreon people um that they what they do is they get the uh the stems of the poundcast theme song and they do these remixes and um, we, we, you usually hear those remixes at the top of the show. If we have new ones, you know, we'll play those. Anyway, so look, we, Gemma Leslie, okay? Um, you've heard the name, you know, a familiar uh, name to the, to the Poundcast. Uh, they made this remix that is, um, you know, it's, it's kind of tongue in cheek, I would say. It's kind of a joke in a way, but it's, um, it's kind of a, a play on sort of, um, you know, uh, kind of, I guess it relates to the last, the last episode uh, that Doug was on uh, last week. Um, and so it kind of relates to that, you know, you know, basically Doug is, I guess, to catch people up. I mean, Doug is taking a kind of an indefinite hiatus and, um, you know, he might be back soon or might, might, I don't know, it's a little uncertain, you know, but um, he might not be back. I mean, he's certainly, he's on tour right now. So he's certainly not going to be back for at least a, you know, couple of few weeks or whatever but even aside from that you know it's a little up in the air he might do it sporadically or whatever but um so this theme song is sort of a remix based on that idea okay and um and so yeah here it is from Gemma leslie this is called brent will talk to brent's friends that's what this is called 
And um, I guess let's go ahead and roll the clip for the, uh, the intro theme song. Brent talking. Brent, what oh, will Brent talk talking. about today? Brent talking to some pimples. Brent will talk to friends and Brent talking on the Poundcast. Welcome to the Poundcast. My name is Brent Weinbach. I'm here with Jack Birch. Let's go. <laughs> Come on now. <laughs> Where did you where did you hear that? Where'd you pick on that Twitch, up? On Twitch. On Twitch, where else? Oh, you picked my it up on Twitch? My favorite streamers. Oh yeah, that's seconds. what they do. Oh, they do that when they play their games, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so it is July 5th. People are listening to this though some days later. Um and maybe even some years, you know, maybe decades people are listening to this. Yeah. Uh later. But you yes i don't know i mean are you as a foreigner you probably didn't do much but and look as a native i didn't do much but yesterday was what is known as independence day a day that we celebrate uh as a reminder of our independence from the country of your of your birth i know that's a principle I can't celebrate. What does that mean? Thought. How does that feel to you? <laughs> you feel kind of weird about that? Is it a little bit awkward or what? It's kicking the nuts. Here's the thing. It's been centuries. Uh-huh. Um, it's been a long time. And at one point, does it not be, is it not weird anymore when stuff like that happens? You know what <laughs> I mean? Because I feel like... It's not a big deal, you know? Okay, so I think that obviously it's not a big deal, right? But when, at one point, was it a big deal, you know? <laughs> I mean, at, in 1800, I imagine maybe it was a little weird, you know? Yeah, I, I couldn't be in the room, right, in the 1800s. Something, right? I don't know. But then again, I, I'm pretty certain. Actually, I don't is it, know. Is it to do with tea tax? Is that what it's about? That I'm not it. that versed on it. That's part of it. I think that was part of it, but... We just um, wanted a little bit of tax. What's wrong with that? <laughs> <laughs> you have to yeah, break I up mean, with I, us. I don't know, but the whole thing, it's all kind of interesting, but it's, it's, what's also interesting to me is the period that it's not weird anymore. So my friend's mom, who is 80 mm -hmm. or around 80, she, okay. So let's, to put that in perspective, she was born in, you know, the, the forties, I guess, you know, I mean, she was born probably right around 1940, 1941 or something like that. So, okay. World War II ends in 45, right? Wait, it's 45, right? Yeah, 45. And so she, to this day, will not step foot in Germany. She's Jewish, by the way. She's okay. Jewish and she will not step foot in Germany. And she also won't even do a layover flight in germany so oh, if she's wow. flying somewhere and in case it kicks off again <laughs> she just has that much uh feeling of of, of negative yeah. about or whatever about what went down and about germany that even though you know well anyway yeah and that she won't even hmm. even if a flight is if more expensive to not do the layover in Germany, she'll take the more expensive flight. She just will not even stop. She won't even land on German ground. Is she, is she not wearing Adidas? Not driving oh, BMWs? Adidas. Um, yeah, right. I don't know. <laughs> I, I, I don't know, actually. Does she drive a Mercedes? That I also don't know. Um, like how deep the way, does the boycott go? I'll say, but then on the other hand, my father, who is 87, he does not so he was born in 37 and mm -hmm. he um he's i mean so he was you know definitely of a of a conscious age you know or uh what do you call it an aware enough age while world war ii is still going on 
he has gone to Germany many times and he, um, you know, when he was in his twenties, which was, you know, in the late fifties and, you know, in the sixties, he uh, was a, a door to door salesman in Europe and he would mm -hmm. sell, he would go, he traveled all over Europe. He went to, he went to Germany and spent time, a lot of time there and uh, all over Europe and he has no issue. And he, got had a Mercedes too in the seventies. Yeah. <laughs> and That's he interesting. Was, so he was, so I guess for him, it wasn't weird. And then for some people it's weird, but it does seem to me, so I don't know, maybe he's just uh, sort of, um, I don't know. I'm just wondering what's up, you know, what's going on and why are you weird about, you know, <laughs> why are you weird about independence day yesterday? <laughs> you specifically didn't want to record yesterday. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, but no, it's just kind of, I, I do think though that once a generation, it's, once it's been three generations, I think pretty much people don't care, you know, about yeah. any kind of wars and stuff, you know? Yeah. Or definitely. any rivalries and stuff, you know? Yeah, like, yeah. How much influence are your, like, great grandparents going to actually have on your life, you know? Or even your grandparents, you know? I mean, yeah. I think it's like, I think it's maybe once it's been 60 years since some kind of war or something like that, then maybe things are cool for most people. But Hey, for my dad, he was, he was out and about in Germany. He couldn't wait to get back there. Yeah. He couldn't wait. He was into <laughs> it, you know? Oh, and my dad is Jewish, by the way, I should mention. Yeah. Mm. So yeah, that's interesting. You didn't do any, you weren't setting off fireworks in the parking lot or anything yesterday. Me? Yeah. Oh no, I blew up some mosques you know no i'm just kidding um i uh no i didn't do anything at all no uh i i was just um no i i did zero i no you know what i did i went to <laughs> i went to go get pizza and that pizza place was closed that i went to so i got a <laughs> burger instead from a burger joint okay so in a way i kind of had a yeah i had a burger with some spicy but not spicy. That's pretty some, American. Yeah, it's pretty. I guess it is. Yeah, <laughs> I, I had some uh, cherry peppers on there. You know, kind of spiced it up a little bit. Put mm. some bacon on there. Mm hmm. You go ketchup, mayo, and toothpaste, red, white, and blue. Mm. <laughs> I can't think of any other blue sauce. What is blue? Yeah, what is a blue sauce? Is agave blue? No. Mm mm. Um, maybe like a blueberry compote. Yeah, something like that. But there's also a, uh, I know there's a blue spirulina or something like that. Is that <laughs> isn't spirulina supposed to be? Oh yeah, it's like a yeah, it makes things blue. I think spirulina is blue, so maybe you get that. You get put some spirulina mm. on that, you know. <laughs> um. So anyway, um. So yeah, spirulina with some ketchup and gosh, does it have to be mayonnaise? <laughs> I just don't want that on my stuff. Cream cheese. Okay, now we're talking. Now we're talking. Now we're talking. That's the uh, America burger. Yeah, the, <laughs> well, I guess you could put cream cheese with tomato. Actually, cream cheese and tomato soup is kind of like um. Actually, beets are kind of. They're more purple, I guess, but they're kind of in the red zone. Cream cheese with a beet uh, soup is sort of a, an Eastern European, you know, thing, mm. you know. So, uh, yeah. So put some spirulina on that. I got <laughs> something go. cooking a little bit. But you know what? <laughs> Honestly, this thing could be a French burger. It could be a Russian burger. There's a lot of red. It could be white. a British burger. That's right. It could be a British burger, too. I mean, there's a lot of red, white, and blue out there. It doesn't have mm -hmm. to be the United States. Uh, Do you think that's the most popular flag color combo? It's got to be, right? It's got to be. Well, I mean, let's think about it. Why don't we take a quick look at the flags? And sorry if this is boring to people, but we're <laughs> learning, right? We're learning about things. Um, all country flags. Let's see. All country flags. I want to see them all. Flags of the world. I mean, there's about 196 countries, though. So are we going to get... All of them? <laughs> Let's go through them all. Uh, well, okay. Oh, this is pretty cool. Whoa, I got 256 results. I mean, this probably has some, probably some territories and island nations on here too, probably, I'd imagine. 
Um, okay, so here's what we're looking at. Sorry to the listeners, but we'll describe these in great detail. We'll just pick out the ones that are red, white, and blue. Can you name all these flags too, by the way? Yeah, no way. Wait, this is not... <laughs> How is that not... Is that because it's like... Is that a different flag? This must that... be... I don't know. Is it colonized or something, maybe? That's some sort of colony or something like that, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, what's this colony right here, by the way? It's this oh, Commonwealth the... country right here. So it's, I have... it looks like a British flag, and then there's a shield with some fish on it. And the, f the fish are in some kind of, like, three-way. Yeah, they're kind of doing, like, a three-way kiss underwater. <laughs> You ever do that? <laughs> Three way kiss underwater. What could that yep. be? I'm trying to think. A Commonwealth country. What were, where would there be fish? Is it got to be? I don't know. Is it some sort of New Zealand type joint? I have no. No, idea. you know what? I just realized it's probably in alphabetic order, so it probably starts with an A. It's probably Australia, right? No, it's Anguilla. An Anguilla. 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 Or Anguilla. 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 Never heard, of her. never heard of her. Never. Heard of her. <laughs> never. <laughs> this this one's kind of red, white, and blue as well above it. Right. It's some sort of Samoa. Oh, Samoa, American Samoa. That's so. Oh, that makes sense. It's, it's red, white, and blue, kind of because. Yeah, so to... I mean, wow! Look at all these yeah. Commonwealth countries. Look. I mean, geez, these two look the same. Oops. <laughs> what are they? Ashmore and Cartier Islands, Australia. And oh, Australia. Australia looks the same as. Ashmore and Cartier, that must be around there, I guess. Somewhere. Yeah, I wonder why that is. Look at that, this thing. This, There's nothing, this one, Baker Island? I was about to say, this, <laughs> I was about to say, this is the United States flag. It's not, it's Baker Island. What's Baker Island? <laughs> oh, oh, this, oh, shit. This the is CIA the CIA website, it. by the way. This is CIA.gov that we're on right now. Baker Island doesn't exist anymore. I don't get that, by the way. Baker Island. No, you know, it's as as red, white, and blue as, as as a lot of flags are. There's something about the U.S. flag that definitely looks different than all other flags. You know. Yeah, for sure. That ain't no Japan flag. That's some other weird <laughs> thing. There's a red dot on a green sort of flag. It almost. Makes me think of India. Oh, it's kind there of we go. Bangladesh. Yeah, it did. It, something about this look like, reminded me of India. You know why? <laughs> I don't know. I guess this kind of looked like a bindi or something to me. You know? <laughs> I, it's just a, it's just a zoomed in picture of a bindi. That's what it looks like. I mean, <laughs> a bindi on green skin. Um, what is this Commonwealth? Uh, I could not tell you. Well, it probably starts. That's with a, a. It's a. a Brit, it's a UK flag again. But the background is all red, and is that like a bear in the emblem? Yeah. What is that? It looks to be a bear. Maybe it's bear. 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 Oh, what what starts with a B? That's an English <laughs> thing, or a Commonwealth. Whatever. Bermuda. Okay, Bermuda. Uh, oh, I should have known that. There's a, there's a lot of non-red ones. Gosh, there are a lot of these Commonwealth flags. You know. I mean. Wow, I thought the sun set on the British Empire, but it didn't. Though. <laughs> still, well and alive. We're still going strong. One, that one's Brazil, right there. That green one with the yellow diamond. Mm hmm. Brazil. What is this? British India, Indian Ocean Territory. <laughs> and the the lines are all wavy, like it's the ocean, you know. <laughs> British Virgin Islands. Oh, they got a virgin on the on the thing, <laughs> and it says Vigilate. Vigilate, that's how you say virgin in Latin. <laughs> Is that how you Maybe. My Vigilate. What about this one? Cayman Islands. There go the Canada. Come on. There's go Canada right there. They got the Canada's got a pretty recognizable flag, you know, they got that leaf. Yeah, that's pretty cool. How do they decide, you know? Look at this Lone Star State. What is this <laughs> flag right here? Just one star. It's red. It's 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 a reduced American flag. It just has one star, one white stripe, one red stripe. That That's was the very it. first one. This has got to be Texas. No, it's Chile. <laughs> so Chile <laughs> is just basically some sort of reduced American flag. That is interesting. <laughs> huh. Chile. And what about that? 
This one, this kind of this other blue, white and, red. white and red, or something like that, or <laughs> no, that's straight up front. Oh no, Clipperton, Clipperton Island. That's where the Clippers practice. <laughs> China, right here. And this has got to be Australia again, right? <laughs> Tasmania or something. Well, look, if we're in the seas, it's got to. Oh be, yeah. I guess it's something like uh, I don't know. Something I've never heard of. Cocos. Cocos. This is all. This is too God, many. God's, man. Too many flags. God's, now, this, what is this a, ring? Ring of and stars. A lot of them are repeats as well. Right, ring of stars. Ringo star right here. <laughs> Cook <laughs> Islands has got a Ringo star. All right. Well, we we I think we've seen enough. Probably. Seen okay, enough. What about this one here? Is red, white, and blue? It's a, a blue triangle, red, red, and white stripe. Are we in the D section yet? We're still in the C. No. Uh, probably D. It could be D. <laughs> Oh, uh, uh, Czechia. Yeah. Is that the Czech Republic now? Could be. Guess. Now this cross one is going to be some sort of Scandinavian country. I will uh, say, red, white, and blue is the most prominent color in flags. It does sort of seem that way. What and about? The, oh yeah, Denmark. I was going to say Norway. Red is the number one color as well. I've just looked that up. Oh, really? Red is the number one color, and red, white, and then, okay. All right. Well, we've seen an. I've seen an off. I've seen an off. Greece. Greece has got those stripes. Guernsey. Anyway, all right. So you didn't do anything. I didn't do anything. I I listen. I heard fireworks just banging all night. Yeah. Banging all night. <laughs> Yeah, well, yeah, I have a dog that just doesn't like fireworks at all. So the night spent looking after her. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. And what uh, did they? The she was freaking out. Freaking out. Yeah. Was she? Was she barking a lot? I I think they have like I don't know. It's like it's like generational war trauma or something. I have no idea mm -hmm. what it is, but yeah. Oh, maybe she's. Uh, yeah, maybe she's. You know, she's. British or something, <laughs> or maybe she's or something like that. You know, maybe she's got yeah. Some, maybe she's yeah, she German, doesn't. Maybe she's German. You know, yeah. No, she but, doesn't like fireworks, and she won't go to Germany. So fireworks, they represent. It's a tribute to the war, right? I is guess that what so. it is. It's supposed to be. Oh, this is supposed to be representative of cannons firing and stuff, right? And guns shooting. Yeah, I guess so. It's pretty dark. <laughs> I know. it's a reenactment basically <laughs> of something that just led to a lot of death basically it's weird it's kind of this weird reenactment but i guess it's also a tribute to the people who died i guess you know that's a little weird it's a little weird um so yeah um did you ever have a fast um did you have any preconceptions of the United States and then those and then and those turn out to not be true or they were true? Mm. Yeah, I guess so in a way. Um when you were younger I mean, maybe. Yeah, I guess <laughs> LA definitely is just like kind of exactly how it is on TV. Is it really? It'd be kind of wild, yeah. We went to like, you know, seeing all those like low riders and stuff like you know, they have those like cars going down the streets, like that's super American. That was really cool to see. So that was okay. That was exactly the way you thought it would be. Yeah. I played GTA five before coming out here and that's based in LA. Mm -hmm. And I was like, well, this is like exactly the same as GTA five. Police really? choppers, crazy people. Uh-huh. Venice beach is the exact same as it is in the game. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. I could like navigate well, which, my way which one had better graphics, GTA Five <laughs> or Los Angeles? Oh yeah, yeah, GTA Five. The graphics are flawless, but I could navigate my way around Venice Beach because of the game. Is that true? Yeah. Hmm. Uh, but what about when you were younger? Even, you know, maybe mm. say ten years old, nine years old. What did you think of? What were your concept? What are your preconceptions of Los Angeles? Damn, I don't know. I'd probably. <laughs> I've probably only ever been to like Planet Hollywood. <laughs> what do you want to know about Los Angeles? As as somebody who grew up there, you can ask me anything. I could probably tell you about it. Hmm. Damn, I don't even know. 
what do you want to know? What do you want to, what do you want to get to the bottom of, you know? Have you, has, have you always had like celebrity sightings since you were a kid growing up in Hollywood? Yeah, but not as many as one might think, you know? Mm -hmm. I mean, the times I cited celebrities, I, you know, it was always, I can remember every time, you know what I mean? Yeah. I remember when I saw Mike Tyson at the supermarket. Mm Mm-hmm. Well, he was, it was 2020 <laughs> video, actually. It was, he was in the parking lot of the supermarket, 2020 videos, video store. Okay. And I can remember seeing Ian Ziering from Beverly Hills 90210 driving <laughs> around a couple different times. Saw Mike Tyson in his car. I saw Mike Tyson twice, actually. Um, and I saw, one time I saw Jamie Foxx in 1999 at a hotel. And I saw Alan Thicke on the street once. And <laughs> yeah, I mean, John Voigt came to my class once, you know, that's pretty, talk, that's pretty to, Hollywood to talk about acting because I don't know, somehow my teacher knew him. So he came to my <laughs> class and talked to us about that, acting. That's pretty Hollywood right there. <laughs> yeah. My Bialik actually came to my class cause she, she went to the same school. Um, uh, you told me a pretty interesting one when you used to deliver pizza i don't know if you want to talk about that sugar ray sugar mm, ray robinson it wasn't sugar ray you talking about brad brad off pitler i'm talking about brad that's, off from, pitler. that's from bruno they said that in bruno <laughs> um yeah i i mean i've said this many times to people so i i i mean on this podcast in fact oh okay but yeah i did in fact deliver to brad pitt i delivered pizzas in the late nineties. And, um, I, yeah, delivered to Mark McGrath from Sugar Ray and Brad Pitt <laughs> and, uh, Pitt was tall. He's tall. Mm-hmm. He was tall. Mm-hmm. He had a cowboy hat on <laughs> and he tipped pretty well too. Tobes McGuire. I delivered to him. Kirsten Dunst. Um, <laughs> my sister delivered to some celebrities too, like John Fershante from the, Wait, you done Toby Maguire and Kirsten Dunst? I delivered to both of them. Yeah, it's separate. That's they were at the same. They lived that's together. Spider Man one and two and three, right? Oh, I don't know when Spider Man one. When did Spider Man one come out? Well, anyway, I they were living together, mm. and they. I one time it was him, and one time it was her. She, yeah. She rubbed on my hand too. <laughs> That's her tip. It was kind of a bit of a tip. Don't, I don't have a tip, but let me touch your hand. Yeah. <laughs> She's like, this one goes out. She goes, I'm gonna <laughs> rub on your hand. This one's for me and Tobe. <laughs> That's what she said though. She was she said she just said, Tobe, the food's here. <laughs> she called him Tobe. Oh, yeah, that's funny. Tobe, the food's here. <laughs> Tobe. Oh boy, those were different days. <laughs> I used to just be so eighties in in the night when in the late nineties. I started delivering in the in the late nineties, but I was I think I was delivering in the early two thousands a little bit too, maybe. But um, yeah, I did it during the summer and stuff, you know, like during summer vacations. But um, so I was super eighties about it though. <laughs> I I used to just you know I was driving, you roller skate there. <laughs> I was driving an eighties car. I had this roller skates on no but i used to short shorts the more modern way of holding a pizza was you put it in a hot box and you hold it like this Mm -hmm. with both hands in front of Mm -hmm. you not me i wanted to go 80 style so i took it out of the hot box before i when i got it out of the car and Mm -hmm. i held it with one hand you know kind of on the bottom of the, the the box and i would hold it like that i'd ring the doorbell i'd go pizza delivery you know, classic <laughs> style, classic style yeah. pizza delivery. And, you know, I wore, I, I was driving an eighties car at the time. And I also had, if it was eighties night on the radio, perfect. I would have that plan, you know, get the eighties music going. I, I wanted to be in the eighties, you know? Yeah. Even in the nineties, I wanted to be in the eighties, you know, keeping the dream alive. I love the eighties, man. I, I started being missing the 80s in 94 so just five years after the 80s i was thinking man the 80s had all this good stuff you know (laughs) and i just started to be really nostalgic about the 80s even in 94 
you know? And I, I, I love, I wish I lived in the eighties. I, uh, I wish it would, I mean, look, I wish I lived in the eighties still, but I wouldn't want to know about the internet. You know what right. I mean? Okay. I wouldn't want to know that existed in the future. Okay. Because yeah. I will say the internet has definitely changed a lot of things for the, for the better in a lot of ways, sometimes for mm -hmm. the, in, for the worse in some ways, but, but it, oh. overall it's a big convenience, the internet. Yeah. So this is crazy. So, you know, Elon Musk has that Starlink internet company. Yeah. What's that all about? Some kind of connecting some stars to a penis or something? Or... <laughs> yeah, basically it's like satellites that give internet to like remote places. So they like, set it up for this like uncontacted tribe in the amazon really to have like yeah they gave them laptops and internet and within like a month they were all like addicted to porn and like had fell for online scams no kidding. And online gambling and stuff like that yeah like they just oh gave my them god really they gave them this internet access and no like i guess like safety lessons or anything that's funny and yeah, oh, apparently that's... the tribe leader has like cut it off, so they're like not allowed it anymore. That's so funny. He kind of corrupted the tribe. <laughs> yeah, like instantly. What do you expect, though? I guess. But <laughs> so they fell for a bunch of scams, mm -hmm. and then they—that's kind of set. Where was the tribe? In the Amazon. In the Amazon, huh? Interesting. Yeah. Wow, that's interesting. How did they even have? They had computers there too. Yeah, I think they gave them a bunch of computers. Oh, they gave them computers too. Yeah. Wow. And then they just found the porn sites. <laughs> yeah. Like, I wonder how somebody who scams. looks up pornography, <laughs> you know, if they don't have experience doing that, how do they go about doing that? What do they do? You know, do they just type in big boobs on like on, on Google? They go big My breasted, friend. big breasted women. Yeah. Big vaginas. Big vaginas. Wow. <laughs> you know, what are they searching for? How do they get to those sites? Big, big vagina. All the vaginas. I feel like, don't they have their like dick and boobs out anyway in those tribes? I don't know. Right. So maybe they're looking for something else. Maybe they're typing in <laughs> penetration. <laughs> penis into vagina penetration. <laughs> big penises, big vaginas. Wow. <laughs> they type in wow. Yeah, that's crazy. Hmm. I wonder if, yeah, that's. Addicted to porn, you say? Mm hmm. Wow. So they're just masturbating all the time, you guys <laughs> and girls. Wow. What? A... And the tribesman said, no, you cannot touch that. Yeah. Yeah. He, he banned it. <laughs> Man, imagine getting the internet and then you get deprived <laughs> of the internet after you get it. I, I know, that like a sucks. month later. And think about the people who weren't, you know, were just wanted it to watch comedy videos on YouTube or something. You know? <laughs> yeah. They, they want to watch them. ruined it for us with all this scam porn stuff they're just you know? trying to watch their mr beast pranks you know right they just wanted to watch <laughs> mr Br beast that's it they just wanted to see they just were trying to watch lonely girl 15 you know that <laughs> yeah, was probably you're probably too young for that one but you <laughs> yeah, know about lonely girl no i don't know that lonely girl was you know in the 2000s early youtube and mm -hmm. um started off it was this girl just doing video blogs and like one it, of the first vloggers or something well it's more than that she started okay. to, to kind of mention how her family was in a cult basically mm -hmm. and and it became this and then it was just yeah it became this narrative series of her trying to escape this cult and stuff and well that's crazy yeah, and, and everybody thought she was a real girl. It, was, it turned out she was an actress, and it was a it was a fake thing. Oh, okay. and everybody thought she was real, and some people were really felt really betrayed because they thought, you know, she was just a real person telling her story. But I thought it was a really, I mean, I, I don't know. I'm not really taking into account the, I don't know, the quality, but of storytelling or whatever. But just the fact that it was this sort of new way of storytelling was interesting to me, you know, yeah. that it was a story was told through a series of video blogs that eventually kind of evolved into something that was not video blogs. You know, for example, the camera would be running and some serious thing would be happening. Um, some kind of action yeah. or something like that. But I just thought that was kind of neat, you know, and that and, and in the two thousands, that was kind of this thing that emerged was this new way of storytelling, which is a completely new format, 
is yeah. people, you know, doing these video blogs. And sometimes, you know, people would tell stories about their real lives that weren't, that weren't fictional, like this lonely girl one, you know, like, um, like this guy, um, uh, Prue Wayne to forever. Uh, this guy, you know what I'm talking about? No, I don't know. By review of 10,000 BC. No, <laughs> no I don't know. know Thank you very much. He kind of sounded like Dave Chappelle a little bit in a way, but he, I don't know. He, This kid started doing video blog. He was doing re- a lot of reviews of movies and stuff, but he probably started doing it when he was maybe 11 or something. And then you see him grow up and, and into his 20s. And then he deleted his account, I think, sometime in his early 20s maybe. But you started to learn a little bit about his dad who seemed to be an alcoholic and and he's, you start to learn about his life and his social life and stuff at school. And so these other stories like developed through the medium of him doing these, like, well, it's just that we, we get to learn about this guy's life. Yeah. You're just little bits and pieces and through the way a lot of it is him reviewing movies and stuff, but then there were things (laughs) where he would just talk and you would just, you learn about his life and it was just an interesting way of storytelling where, Oh, I have this, this, this idea of this. There is a sort of narrative that developed in my mind from watching this kid's videos, you know, that's what on cinema at the cinema was kind of at the beginning. Yeah, I guess so. I guess it was. Yeah. 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 But this is interesting because this is a real kid though, too. Yeah. Going to forever, you know? So that's interesting about, um, YouTube and video blogging is that it is this new way. Well, from, you know, there's this new way of storytelling. So, okay. Anyway, so that's that. Did you watch a lot of YouTube growing up? Mm, I mean, YouTube, when I started, it was just like low quality music videos, basically. Mm-hmm. I, didn't, I wasn't really watching like vloggers or anything like that. Mm-hmm. Was you, I did MySpace. I guess I was like, Oh, you were on 14. MySpace. Probably at like 14, 15. Yeah, I was on MySpace. Okay, so you were around for MySpace. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, MySpace was kind of nuts. <laughs> no, I just, you do MySpace? I was on MySpace, but, you know, I, I, God, I was always so resistant to doing any social media sites. Yeah. I never did Friendster. Everyone had Friendster at one point. I said, ugh, I didn't do it. Then when MySpace came along, it took a little while for me to get on board, but I did it for my career. <laughs> Mm-hmm. <laughs> and, um, yeah, man, I remember just people's sites that were customizable and they were just nuts. You know, they had these crazy yeah. sites that would crash your computer sometimes and stuff, <laughs> you know, um, MySpace. It's kind of interesting though. You know, you could, I don't know. That was a different time man. MySpace, but also at the same time, not that different from today, I guess. But, um, yeah. MSN messenger was big that age as well for me what was it called maybe msn messenger mm, yeah i never so, y- used that so yeah it, it was just like instant messaging that was it but you'd like get home from school and just carry on talking to everyone well i know people used america online instant messaging or something mm. right i know which i never used oh either. the aol one yeah it's like the same thing yeah i never used that either hmm. dude you could send someone a nudge and it would shake their whole computer like this whatever they were doing like really? the screen would like shake, yeah. Really? <laughs> yeah. Seems a little kind of interesting, kind of weird. Yeah. Seems weird. a little dangerous, you know. <laughs> you might mess up their screen or something <laughs> like that. Um. Yeah. Uh. What you had a MySpace page, huh? Mm-hmm. What'd you have yeah. on it? Were you just all kind of like shirtless and stuff? <laughs> no, I wasn't. What, really you, what were you like in high in the equivalent of high school? I mean, I was like a big like Green Day, Blink One Eight Two kid. Oh yeah, yeah yeah. Green Day, huh? Uh huh. Yeah. What Green did you Day have? Was a big... Did you what did you, so you listen to Green Day and Blink One Eight Seven? Mm-hmm. <laughs> on, on the other undercover cop. So yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. Uh, what did you did you have a wallet chain? Yeah, I had a wallet chain. Uh-huh. <laughs> I did. Did you, wear gas station, did you wear gas station shirts? <laughs> Yeah, like the kind of like bowling shirt kind of things. Yeah. Yeah, I did. I had like baggy jeans, the chain, sweatbands. Huh. Okay. And were Green you a sometimes. good student at school or were you um, not? Did I you mean... Cut, did you cut class? 
uh in the end i did i was a pretty good student at first but then i don't know when you turn like 13 i guess my like interest kind of changed i liked part we were like partying when we was that age uh-huh you and, smoke like, cigarettes yeah and skateboarding and all that uh-huh uh-huh and what kind of comedy stuff were you checking out at that age uh so monty python was like i love monty python you, you really you like monty python huh yeah and uh like look around you as well do you know like look around you like stuff i, like I heard that. about that I've, i think doug likes that show yeah 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 actually one of our i think it was our music teacher like held us behind after class and like sh thought we would like it so showed us like episodes oh, really? of look around you and it was oh, like really? yeah got into it like that huh um what about trigger happer tv do you remember that oh yeah yeah <laughs> yes when i lived in I, I was in england for a year i remember that was on tv and i thought okay some kind of they did pranks and stuff you know yeah like, uh, like an impractical jokers almost yeah kind of yeah thing. they're wearing they got that big cell phone on the subway system and stuff mm -hmm. they do stuff like that you know then they had that graham norton guy on there too you know? <laughs> he still does his thing now right yeah i think he still has his show now just like a talk show. Is he Irish? Graham Norton. He might be Scottish. Might be Irish. Yeah. What about Sean Connery? Did you like him as a Scotsman? <laughs> yes. I mean, did you like yeah. him as a Scotsman? Not you as a Scotsman, but him as a Scotsman. Did you like him? Yeah, I like Sean Connery. Uh -huh. Do you play chess? Do you play chess? <laughs> He's alive again. Is, is that Lawrence of Arabia or something? He wasn't know. in that. No. But maybe you're thinking of the man who would be king? Yeah, I think so. Um so uh anyways, um so when you so nothing surprised you about the United States? I mean, not really. It's always so prevalent in the media like since I was a kid that, you know. Right, it's no surprise. Nothing yeah. was overblown. Nothing was skewed in any way uh you know <laughs> no it's it's background. it's kind of as wild as it is in the media mm -hmm. is it more the wild, wild west is it more wild i mean a little bit i mean i said that the first time i ever met you guys and came on i mean the moment i got off the shuttle bus from the airport like there was a woman defecating on the street mm -hmm. <laughs> and you thought to yourself this is america right <laughs> <laughs> you thought to yourself God bless America. <laughs> I don't know. Um, did you um? Do you think that there is a such thing as an um, an American stereotype? Uh, yeah, for sure. I mean, whether they actually exist or not, but no. I mean, I guess what I mean is, is um, how often do you meet American stereotypes? Mm, I I haven't. Am I an American stereotype? No, I would think like <laughs> an American stereotype is like the like electric mobility scooter in Walmart. Ah, yes, 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 <laughs> yeah. Yes, 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 right. yeah. There's a lot of those at Disney World. Yeah, yeah, right. Where you sit down in them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's a lot of those. Those are interesting. <laughs> those are interesting. I think I got on one of those once. You know. Yeah. Just to ride around and see what it felt like. You yeah, know? I'd ride around. Why not? Get a taste of, you know, the magic. <laughs> I wanted to get a taste of the magic a little bit. Yeah. Um, and um, did you meet stereotypical British people when you was over here? Stereotypical? Nah, I don't know. I, you know, when my best friend when I was 10 was English, actually. Okay. So I kind of already got a taste, you know. You had the, the taste, action. yeah. Had a taste of the action, you know. And um, no, in fact, I'm trying to think. Of what is a stereotype? You know, tea and stuff. Some proper kind of person, you know, just being yeah, all proper, I, or yeah, being really some exist. kind of punk or some sort of punk or some rude boy punk or something, <laughs> right? Yeah. I don't think I met anybody like either one of those. I guess you know. <laughs> I mean, there was this one guy who was. You go to the LCR. And he was like, "Don't this my flyer." He's like, "Hey, don't touch that. That's mine." But he was yeah. joking. I mean, he was kind of joking, but he was, that was his persona, kind of. 
Yeah, he sounds. That's probably the most British person you'll meet. Did you see what Wayne was eating earlier today? <laughs> it was well weird. I mean, it looked well nice. It was well weird though. And there was this other guy he used to go like this. Who's been stealing my stock? You know, <laughs> stork, stork, stork margarine. Oh yeah, like the butter. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Margarine. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it was called <laughs> stork. The brand is called stork. <laughs> yeah. And then he was going, "Who's been stealing my stock?" Was it you? No, it wasn't me. Uh, I don't steal anybody. I keep to my own thing. <laughs> no, I live with a bunch of these boys. They were all different in different ways, man. One of them was in a grunge yeah. music. The other one was in a reggae. <laughs> There's a big <laughs> variety of kids there, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah, they sound like typical like uni, English uni boys. Yeah, there was one kid. The kid this who's been stealing my stock? He was into pop stuff. He was into Britney Spears and stuff like that, you know? Okay. And then, so you got the reggae kid, the Britney Spears kid, you got the grunge <laughs> guy, the grunge guy like Nirvana and stuff or whatever. Uh huh. And then you got the one guy who, I guess he liked club music and he was just, he was the most alpha guy in, in the place, you know, he was just so alpha. He's, he's all like this, yeah, well, I've got this, I've, he's like, I've got the stomach of a goat. <laughs> not, I can eat anything. I've got the stomach of a goat. <laughs> Is the goat alpha? I, but I really just, <laughs> You know, I had varying degrees of connectivity with these people, you know, and mm-hmm. I connected to him so little. It was crazy how little I was able to connect to him. Mm-hmm. I'd like to think at this age, I'd be able to in- engage with him a little better, you know, and yeah, find more, I don't know, talking points with him or connectivity <laughs> with him. But, but the guy, then there was the one guy who was kind of just, his persona was kind of that of a, I don't know what you want to call it, but you know. Hey, that's mine. He's like, well, you're going down to Garage Nation. <laughs> going to Garage Nation. I think we're going to LCR first, and then we're going down to Garage Nation. So that guy, I didn't connect to him for a long time, and then near the end of my stay there, it clicked with me that he was hilarious. And yeah. I, I didn't realize he was hilarious. I thought he was just yeah. a jerk, you know? And then I realized, oh, this guy's but actually He didn't hilarious. know he was. Well, he no, I, I think he, I think he did. I just didn't understand mm. his sense of humor really at first, and right. then it clicked, and then I really started to like him. And I kind of wish I, I wish went I went to Garage Nation. I wish I was, yeah, I wish I was a member of Garage Nation earlier. <laughs> I wish I went to Garage Nation. I think I did go to Garage Nation to be honest. <laughs> to be honest, I think I went to LCR. I didn't ever went to the LCR, um, but yeah. Um, yeah, I started thinking that guy was funny. Once I once I understood, oh, he's actually just funny, actually. And then I just, and then I realized, and then I was kind of really on board with him after that. I just, I wanted to get to know him better, you know, it's funny. <laughs> but he was, he had a funny look, though. He looked, I mean, I have a picture of him that I drew, and I'll share it with everybody <laughs> after, in the, in the unzip. Oh, uh, yeah, I can't wait to see that. Oh, shoot. Oh, the picture that I was going to look at, should I look at that now for this? Yeah, yeah, let's, yeah, why not? Okay, so this it's is quickly. Oh, sh- oh shoot! You know I forgot. There's a there was a phone call that we can answer too. Okay. Yeah, Why don't we cool. do? Okay, let's we'll, we'll do yeah, that. This is- we'll look at the picture and then we'll close and then we'll go to the unzipped and then we'll do um the uh we'll do the video that you have right and then mm-hmm. we have um uh and then what was the other thing? Oh, and I'll show you the picture I drew of this guy I used to live with. Him. Yeah, sounds so, good. Okay, so um, what are we doing? We're looking at the picture first. Yeah, it's just quick. It's just okay. from l- last week's episode. Yeah, and this is because I had requested... Mm-hmm. Uh, and th- who made this? You? Yeah, I just put this together quickly. All right, so this is um, something that Jack made. And sorry that for the listeners, but I'll describe it. I requested... This is so disgusting. <laughs> already. I'm already looking at it. It's so gross. Oh, my God. Um, this I requested that... I, will, I wanted to see what it looked like if Doug and I had a Michael Jackson nose that we, if we had nose job or just, I wanted to see what it looked like if we had a, maybe 20 a nose, nose job jobs. Type, yeah. 10 nose jobs. I think it was. Oh, 10 nose jobs. Okay. Yeah. So this is the 10 nose job, Doug and Brent. And, uh, it's pretty gnarly. I have to say, let's take a look here. It's funny. I I don't know where pe- this picture is floating around that you got because I I don't like this picture actually, and I but I like it a lot more with this nose though. 
This is that's it's got to be in the first row of Google image searches, really? probably. Yeah. So <laughs> here's here's this. Um, wow, yeah. So this is Doug and me with some 10 nose jobs. Now, how did you come across? How did you make this? Did you find people with lots of nose jobs and put this on here, or do you use some sort of yeah? This is this is just so Doug has Michael Jackson's nose just taken straight off of his face. <laughs> oh, is that that's Michael Jackson's nose? Okay, <laughs> yeah, that, that's Michael Jackson's nose. And then yours was just some woman who had botched a nose job, a celebrity, yeah. but I don't know, I don't know who it was. Oh boy. <laughs> what if it was like that for us? I mean, I you look almost... like you could be in Fallout. You look like a ghoul. A ghoul? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. that's interesting stuff. You know, it was just like I'm almost look like I'm about to cry or something. <laughs> I don't know how this got into the mix. You know, I don't know how this got into the mix of what people use for. You know what I mean? Like, right? It's like it... this. Um, you don't you don't use it for promotion, but other people do. Yeah, yeah, and I don't know what bank this is in, you know. <laughs> um, but it's very. Um, it's just it's yeah it's yeah. Anyway, I know who took it though too. I remember when it was. It was uh, it was taken um, at um, when I spoke at the at the Museum of Modern Art, PlayStation One. You know, um, in New York. No, it's called it's the it's the MoMA <laughs> PS One. They call it the PS One. I don't know what the PS stands for, but <laughs> okay, um, that's crazy. And uh, they, the it was actually it was a panel, and it was about Andy Kaufman, and they wanted mm -hmm. us to speak about Andy Kaufman. And me being a former Andy Kaufman Award winner, uh, I spoke at it. But also Tim Heidecker was part of the panel, and so was T.J. Miller. Mm. And um. And it was there, and that, that that this that picture was taken there. I think there's some other pictures from that time that where I don't look like I'm gonna cry as much, but um, <laughs> it's uh, maybe it looks like I'm about to cry because of my nose job, actually. <laughs> yeah, it could you be know? that because I'm kind of looking like this, like <laughs> you know. Yeah, you hit a shelf, you new nose, and it's just it's not going well. Um, yeah, so, um, there's some pictures of Tim and me and, mm. and TJ Miller, you know? Um, so anyways, um, okay. Let's listen to this phone call real quick here. Uh, let me load it up. We'll get this phone call. We'll wrap it up and then straight like that. And, uh, this one comes to us from, um, hold on comes to us from a um, 716 area code. 716, what is that? Hmm. Okay, well, we'll see. Oh, okay, I see the person says, oh, here it goes. Hey, this is uh, Pimple Stevie B from Buffalo. Um, What's up, Stevie B? I just had a kind of weird... <laughs> no, Stevie from Buff. Huh? <laughs> Stevie Buffs. What's up, Stevie B from Buffalo? The B standing for Buffalo, Stevie Buffalo. What's up, Stevie Buffalo? That's what it kind of almost seems like, you know? Yeah. Hey, this is Stevie B from Buffalo. The B stands for Buffalo and Stevie Buffalo. Hi, I'm Stephen Buffalo. I'm... Yeah. Hey, this is uh, Pimple Stevie B from Buffalo. Um, I just had a kind of weird coincidence happening involving the pound cast. Uh, uh, I was yeah, man, he needs to he needs to take some Beano or something. Man. That was he was just laying farts hardcore just now. <laughs> Coincidence happening involving the pound cast. Uh, oh wow! Uh, must, have been, must have been the shrimp pizza that you get ate this morning. <laughs> yeah, Stevie B. The beers for blasting hard farts. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. He's blasting those buffalo farts. <laughs> uh, I was watching today's episode that came out on let's see, July 3rd for Pimples. Oh, okay. That's recently. You guys are playing the game where you've got people in disguises. Or, excuse me, who people were that are in disguises. 
We started off with Alfred Hitchcock. I was listening to the podcast at work. Got to make this faster. And I paused it because I was at work. And by the way, for anybody who's not a Patreon subscriber, I made this game where it wasn't... I showed Doug images of people not looking like they normally look or the, not, not looking recognizable, you know? So they were either in disguise or they're... Or uh, that maybe it was a different time in their life when they didn't look the way they normally would look. And um, so that's, that's what he's talking about. And I paused it because I was at work on the next guy after Alfred Hitchcock, who was dressed like Buddy Holly. And then I went, I did not get back to watching the show later. And then I went to go see a movie at a theater near my house. They're showing the movie... Uh, Pulp Fiction, and I, and I haven't seen Pulp Fiction in a long time, and I get to the scene where at the restaurant, and I see the picture of the guy dressed like Buddy Holly, and I, I swear to you, I had that episode, Poundcast episode paused right on that image because I had to pause it for work, and never got the answer, and then I watched the movie at a movie theater near my house. And I figured out the answer just by chance, which I thought was sort of interesting. And uh, that's all I have to say. Hey, I think it is interesting. I don't think it's sort of interesting. I think it's pretty interesting, actually. You know, because... Is it the same picture that's in Pulp Fiction that you use? It's not just a picture. He saw the live... I took a screenshot from the movie. Oh, okay. It's not even a picture, so it's... (laughs) He saw the scene with the Mm. actor in there. But actually, I guess my question to Stevie Buffalo would be, or Stevie B, (laughs) would be... Why are you on the freeway? (laughs) (laughs) Did you take Beano before going to the screening of Pulp Fiction? (laughs) No, I'm just kidding. Did Did you... I guess not recognizing it, you know, from the picture, did you... Could you tell who the actor was when you were when he it wasn't just a still frame you know were you able to was did, did the motion of him or did his voice help you understand who it was or did you just simply look it up and see it in the credits you know at the end of the movie Pull back and let us know yeah let us know and you know farts away <laughs> um so hey look hey thanks for the call stevie um I, I thought it was actually that's pretty that's i think it is pretty crazy that you saw pulp fiction not knowing what that picture was from and then no and then seeing it that day and having it pause on that picture i think that is i do think that is cool and i'm glad you shared that with us and and i think it's um connections like that that make life worth living <laughs> so so stuart if you're out there somewhere <laughs> let's connect let's do let's we we got a lot of time to catch up on since uh <laughs> since those days in England. Um, okay, look, thanks to Jack Birch for behind the scenes stuff. We're going to continue on um, and do more stuff. we got a video that Jack has lined up for us to check out, and I'm going to show you a drawing I did of the guy from England, which I probably showed in the past, you know. A lot of re- stuff just gets repeated, you know, at a certain point. Um, but, yeah, Keep listening to us at patreon.com slash poundcast. Um, not only do you get, you know, an extra half hour or more of stimulating conversation, hopefully, um, or maybe it's conversation to put you to sleep. You know, you're trying to go to bed and you, 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 know, you want something to lull you to sleep and you just want company, you know, you just want voices. You want to be... Uh, we got you covered. People. What? Yeah, we, we got you co- covered. We got you covered. <laughs> You know, we're just here to just we'll tuck you in. We're tucking that butt in, all right? <laughs> You're gonna tuck that penis right in between your legs. We're tucking you in tonight. <laughs> Get that penis nice and snug between those thighs. Get them in those cheeks. Stevie B. <laughs> Stevie B in the house, okay? And that one goes out to Stevie B. B for butt cheeks. <laughs> butt cheeks, New York. So look, patreon.com slash poundcast. You get a service, but it also supports the show, and that's great. It just works out for everybody. There's also some other little tidbits on there. You know you're going to love it. 
And um, anyway, so we'll see you there. Uh, otherwise, we'll see you next week. I'll, I'll be in the studio next week. So, and I think, I think I'll have guest Guy Branham with me. Okay, Guy Branham. So, uh, that's what we'll be in next week, I think. And then uh, straight like that, we're gonna go into. We'll say goodbye, I guess. Thank you all. Goodbye. I'm Brent Weinbach. And, bye bye. Uh, bye bye. some pimples Brent will talk to friends and Brent talking on the Foundcast